Tryout. Anything but like playoff hockey. A total of eight goals are scored. And after two periods of play, seven are in favor of the New Jersey Devils over the Washington. I'm Jeff Rimmer, and a pleasure to have young and future members of the Washington Capitals hockey. And future members of the Washington Capitals hockey club with us. John Drews, a winger who's played in Binghamton the last couple of years. And, uh, John, a wide-open uh, kind of period, not the kind of playoff period the Capitals would like to see. No, there's a lot of goals being scored out there. I don't think that that's what, uh, what they want to happen out there. They started off with a lot of aggressive play, but uh, turned into a high-scoring match. John, you've been with the Washington Capitals here for the past couple of weeks since Binghamton was sidelined. Tell us your impressions of being around the Capitals here during the playoffs. Uh, it's pretty intense around... Uh, out in the ice and everything like that. The coaches are, uh, they really want to win. Uh, David Poole, you know, is a winning person. So it's interesting. It uh, gives me a lot of hype for, you know, wanting to play and get in the lineup. Also, you, you learn really what it's like to be around the Washington Capitals during the Stanley Cup playoffs. I guess it's just kind of a taste of what's ahead for you in the future. Well, you know, every kid growing up wants to play in the Stanley Cup playoffs, win the Stanley Cup. Uh, being around all these guys is really, Great. I couldn't ask for anything better right now at this time. Do they offer any pointers from time to time? Oh, all the time. I'm trying to get pointers from everybody. Mike Gartner and Scott Stevens. What about the Binghamton Hockey Club? Here's a team that uh, shared, was shared last year with uh, both the uh, Hartford Whalers uh, Farms uh, players as well as the Washington Capitals, a team that was uh, a first-round playoff loser. But there are a number of players on that team that I, I think feel that they're going to be in this Washington Capitals lineup before long. Well, uh, we got a lot of talent down in Binghamton. We didn't do so well after the coaching change there. I think uh, the shift really, everybody felt like they had to do something different and try to play a different style of game, so it hurt us. But, you know, we have guys like Grant Jennings, Jeff Greenlaw, who's out there tonight playing very well, and uh, Tim Berglund. You know, we're all here. We want to really play hard and try to make this club. Any chance that you might get into one of these playoff games? Uh, trying to be optimistic, I hope so, but I don't know. It's hard to say. What do the coaches say? Well, they haven't really said much. You know, we go out every day. I just try to work hard, and, you know, one of these days they're just going to come up to you and tell me that I'm in the lineup. I guess that's the way it works. John Drews, good luck. We'd like to see you with the Capitals real soon. Thanks a lot. All right, let's go back upstairs. In fact, we're going to take this short break and then come back and rejoin Mike Forns and Al Koken. Caps trail by three after... Boston, and how about those Bruins here in game number three on goals by Sweeney and Mo LeMay. They lead this hockey game by a score of 2 0 at the Garden in Boston over the Montreal Canadiens. Also, a big game involving the Baltimore Orioles, who are still looking for win number one in this 88 season. They're 0 for 88, and it looks like they may be still 0 for 88 when this one's over. In the fourth inning, they trail the Royals in Kansas City by a score of 9 to nothing. Orioles looking for win number one after losing 15 straight games. The Capitals will be looking to get back in this hockey game here in period number three. They trail by three. Do I have a VCR? Hockey game is brought to you in part by BMW of Fairfax. Named the Mid-Atlantic region's number one dealer for sales and service. By the Masonry Institute. Watch out Washington brick and block our back. By K Jewelers, the Diamond People. By Safeway, by Toyota. There's quality, then there's Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? And by Buick, the great American roads lead to your Washington area Buick dealers. Well, the New Jersey Devils have a seven to four lead over the Washington Capitals. We've finished two periods of play here at the Meadowlands Arena in New Jersey. Mike Forns welcoming you back along with Al Koken and Jeff Rimmer here on our DC 20 Stanley Cup coverage. Only three goals separating these two clubs and what a wild second period that was not only on the scoreboard but in the penalty boxes. All sorts of foolishness going on in the corners in front of the nets and uh, Dennis Morell on many occasions just sending two players at a time to the box. I guess he felt it was more economical doing it <laughs> by the bunch and it was certainly the right approach. Well and it really opened things up. Neither side could get any kind of defensive game going but what New Jersey featured is the same thing they featured starting in period three of game one that ability to just to come back in waves and make the Capitals look bad particularly through the four checking and what they also established in the second period of the of the game the other night with those great shorthanded work now here's the play the Capitals had just come back they're closed within four three should they have momentum yes do they take advantage of it no in comes Anders Carlson one of his few shifts of the night he picks up the loose puck, 
as the Capitals start scrambling around, they don't look confident at that point. You'd think they would be after pulling back to within 4-3. Carlson scores a big goal. Then the Capitals get one more back, pull back to within one, and Doug Brown is the man who gets a goal, again on some sloppy capital play. We'll see the scoring play here by Doug Brown as he gives the Devils yet another version of how to take advantage of a Washington mistake. Mike Gartner tried to clear the puck off the glass and doesn't get it all the way. Just kind of mishits it and it goes right to Danico. We talked about those point men from New Jersey doing a great job. Now Danico wastes no time, sends it in front, deflects off Brown right by Pete Peters. The Devils had a lead of 4-1 to one when Pete Peters came into the game in the second period. At that point, Malarchuk was pulled. That lead is back now at three goals thanks to this breakaway score by Patrick Sundstrom with only seconds to play in the period. You know, to a degree, this would be an inexcusable shorthanded goal, but you have to really, again, tell people that Scott Stevens was dog-tired. Still, he didn't play it as cleanly as I thought he could have, and that's going to really come back to haunt the Capitals, I would imagine, unless they can continue to mount the attacks they have. Now, it's a wide-open game. We have seen before three goals may not make that much of a difference, but you got to wonder, can they continue to come back and back and back the way New Jersey keeps pushing them back to within, you know, back to two down, three down now. New Jersey has shown tremendous bounce back ability. Even if the Capitals get a couple, will they finally hold on and put themselves over the top? All right, we're ready to go for period number three. Let's check in quickly with Jeff Rimmer. Thanks, Mike. Well, the success of the Washington Capitals in the playoffs really throughout this hockey season has been good, sound defensive hockey. You can't play that wide open hockey and win hockey games, but they'll get a chance here now in the third period to come back, something they've done tonight with some regularity. Back upstairs for the third period, and we rejoin Mike Forns and Al Coca. All right, thank you very much, Jeff Rimmer. We have a couple of interesting statistics for you from Larry Getlin, who's been doing great stat work for the Capitals and for us over the year. Capitals in that second period gave the puck away five times, only two from New Jersey, and the Devils were able to capitalize with a pair of goals on it. The Capitals only once on those giveaways. The puck back inside the Washington zone, and here's Scott Stevens playing it to the point, but not out. Driver keeps it in. Over to Conacher. Now Galley jams up the puck behind the goal, and here's Scott Stevens to start out. Leads it ahead to Mike Ridley. Right wing side to Gartner. Gartner dumps it into the corner. Miller is spilled. There's going to be a penalty call against Doug Brown. A delayed call. Out of the nets comes Clint Malarchuk. In the corner. The puck played by Galley behind the net. Over to Ridley. Ridley tries to center it. Wide it goes to the corner now for Stevens. Stevens throws it off the back glass and Driver plays it for the Devils. And here's a minor penalty call coming. Holding against Doug Brown at 48 seconds of the third period. And the Capitals with an opportunity to start a comeback here. They'll be on the power play. Dennis Morrell starting off the period in the same way he called the other two. Very tight. Doug Brown got the arms around Kelly Miller, pulled him down, and you heard Mike Corns mention Malarchuk heading to the bench. Indeed, it is Clint Malarchuk back in goal to start this third period of play. It comes at 48 seconds. It is still Pete Peters' game to win or lose, but we'll see what happens on the scoreboard. Whether New Jersey scores anymore or whether Washington scores anymore could well affect the outcome again, but after that respite during the second period for a while, it looked like the Caps were responding with Peters in there. But for the scoring that took place at the end, Brian Murray perhaps feeling that Malarchuk had given a chance, been given a chance to gain a little perspective, get him back in there and tell the players to start doing the job in front of him. See if it can work again. But, uh, you know, if the Capitals don't just tighten up a little bit defensively, and this is again an area where Rod Langway is greatly missed. Not only the talent, but he's the type of guy to provide the leadership out there. Talk to some people, lead by some example. play hockey for the Capitals. They trail 7-4. to four. Here's Scott Stevens. Up to center ice. Gets across the line. Dumps it into the corner. It's Gustafson over after it. To the point for Larry Murphy. Going for the hat trick and this drive goes wide. Now Stevens a shot. And that's kicked into the corner. Danico chases. Hunter tries to center for Gustafson and misses. And it sails all the way down the ice. Malarchuk back in goal to start this third period. Into the corner, and Conacher works it free. The shorthanded Devils taking their time, back it out to center ice, and now play has been called. They're ruling a hand pass. 
pass against the Capitals. The faceoff will be in the Washington zone. Well, now they're going to move it just outside the blue line. So we've still got a minute 13 seconds left in Brown's penalty. And 18.25 to go here in the third period. During the regular season, these clubs with very similar one loss records. The Capitals wound up with 85 points. New Jersey wound up with 82, and each team had 38 wins. As you or I have predicted at the beginning of the season, New Jersey would have wound up with the same number of wins as the Capitals, and if so, we both would have probably said, wow, the Caps would really go in the tank to have the same number of wins, but that only happened at the end of the season, when the Devils came on so strong. New Jersey losing 36 games and tying six. The Caps losing 33 times and tying nine. Just three points separating these teams during the regular season of play. Here's Gary Galley on the power play into the corner for Pavanka. Back to the point for Mike Ridley. Now back to Galley. Galley over to Ridley. Back to Galley at the point. A slap shot knocked down and a shot by Pavanka is covered by Burke in front of the net. Jersey penalty killers forcing passing around the perimeter. Gary Galley then makes his move to the middle, unloads a shot. It is stopped, but Michael Pavanka has a whack at it. Doesn't get a lot of steam on it, and Sean Burke easily covers up. Michael Pavanka, the real surprise story to a lot of people in that Philadelphia series. He's really not gotten anything on track here against the New Jersey Devils. It's Philadelphia with the four goals and six assists. to Ken Danico on that last goal by Sunstrom. The last goal of the second period. 20 seconds remaining here in the power play. Mike Gartner takes it across the line. A slap shot goes just wide of the net. Back to the point for Gary Galley. Galley over to Pavanka. Into the corner. Looks for Ridley. Can't find him. Now brings it back to the point. Gary Galley. Rink wide for Hatcher. A wrist shot. A save. A rebound. His shot just wide. Through the goal mouth. Galley back to the point. Hatcher over to Ridley. He fans on a shot. Goes again over to Galley, and it's taken away at the blue line. Here come the Devils on the attack. Patrick Sundstrom to Mark Johnson. He fires. Score! Mark Johnson with the hat trick goes top shelf over Malarchuk's glove hand. 8-4 to four, New Jersey. I think it's become pretty clear right now which team wants this game more and maybe which team wants this series more. Doug Brown comes to the play, ties up Galley for a moment, but look how quickly the Devils break out. That's a shot that should have been stopped. That's not that difficult. But Malarchuk again coming back in cold, but if you're going to get something going, if you're going to advance on in a series, you better, be better get better goaltending than the Capitals have received tonight. Quite a delay as hats come raining from the stands, along with some other debris, in tribute to Mark Johnson's hat trick. There's the break in the action with a score. The Devils 8 and the Capitals 4. Make the difference. It's been almost like the electric chair tonight for the Capitals and the goaltender, whoever's in there. The Devils keep turning on the juice. Eight goals, the most ever given up by the Washington Capitals in playoff competition. Eight-four hockey game. And debris still raining down on the ice. Things have been swept up, but people still keep dumping stuff out on the ice. We're going to have a little more of a delay in the Capitals. More time to think about exactly what's been going on tonight. This could result in serious injury to the players. Anyone caught throw anything on Patrick Sundstrom, already with two goals in this game, has now come up with three assists. So five points for Patrick Sundstrom.
four assists. Six points for Patrick Sundstrom. I mean, go back to that first game when Mike Gartner got his knee on Patrick Sundstrom's knee, and it looked like Sundstrom may have been lost for the series the way he was carried off the ice, but bounced back, played that third period, and he has been a major factor since that time. Did it shake Patrick Sundstrom up? Did all this wake the New Jersey Devils up? You know, the Devils, I really feel, they were almost relaxed once they got into the playoffs against the New York Islanders. Nobody gave them much of a chance, so there wasn't a lot of pressure on them, and they made the Islanders pay, while the Capitals had to go that emotional seventh game and the overtime to beat Philadelphia. Now here they come in there against the Capitals, and they really have got to feel loose. Like, what can we lose? And Jim Schoenfeld is keeping that feeling up. This crowd is behind him. Every game has been packed at the Brendan Byrne Arena, and Jim Schoenfeld has had his players have fun. Gets them out there. He and Bob Hoffmeyer participating in practice the other day out there in a scrimmage. He's had good words for everybody. He's made everybody, even those people who have been injured for so long, feel a part of the team. You talk to a guy like George McVie, who has not played since early in the season. He tells you about sitting in a meeting not long after Jim Schoenfeld took over while the Devils were going bad, trying to boost everybody's spirits. Then he also tells about another meeting right there when the Devils clinched the playoffs, going individually up and down through the locker room, pointing out each person and telling the rest of the teammates where the contribution has been made. If George McPhee hadn't scored a couple goals in a game early in October, the Devils wouldn't have made the playoffs. If David Maley hadn't won a fight in Boston, the Devils wouldn't have made the playoffs. Everybody feels a part of the organization, and it's sure starting to show the way the New Jersey Devils have spread out the scoring, spread out the responsibility, and spread out the toughness, backing each other up. Speaking of Boston, Gordy Kluzak has just scored. The Bruins now lead 3-0 over Montreal in the third period. And Burke has frozen the puck here to stop play with 16.51 left in the third period. The Devils have been outshot 25 to 22 on the night by the Washington Capitals, yet they have doubled the Capitals' goal output, eight goals to four. Clint Malarchuk is back in the net to start this third period. Pete Peters played 18 minutes, 59 seconds in the second period, made eight saves, and gave up three goals against. Right now, he's on the line as the goaltender of decision. But Malarchuk's back in there now. Here's Sorella. Leads it out to center ice, and Jeff Greenlaw, the Capitals' rookie winger, throws it back to the Devils' line. Long slap shot, caught by Malarchuk. And Murphy makes the play. Kept in by Brown, and he crashes that up high and wide. Here's Francis Getty to start out. Up to center ice. He and Belichick tie up at the blue line. The Devils come back on the attack. And Murphy flags it down in his own line. Up the left wing boards now for Greenlaw. He dumps it into the corner. Here's Belichick. Thrown off the backboard. Lead pass to the blue line. Pavanka knocks it down. Plays it. Over to Hunter. Out come the Devils on the attack. Doug Brown at the blue line for Johnson. Going for number four of the night. Fire! And a pad save by Malarchuk. Michael Pavanka. Spins around to Scott Stevens. He works to center ice. Stevens across the line to Gould on the right wing. Gould flips it right on goal, and Burke makes the save and covers up. Mike, that last rush by Mark Johnson, isn't it typifying exactly what the problem for the Capitals have been? Here you got two guys, Gould and Hatcher, both with clean shots at the body. Both of them try and play the puck. Johnson's so slippery, He'll keep the puck away from you. Nail him. Put him on his rear end. Give him a shot. Everybody going for the puck, and Mark Johnson is still standing with three Capitals around him. Of course you'll get a hat trick if you let a guy that small give that much room to him in prime location. Sure, he'll be scoring goals. Put him on his rear. Knock him off. Do what the Devils have done to a lot of the Capitals tonight in front of that goal. Danico behind the net. 
Out to center ice, and Hatcher throws it back in. Now we've got a man down right in front of the Washington bench. It's David Maley, rolling around, writhing in pain. And in the corner, Danico decides to take on Hatcher. And Hatcher starts to uncork some right hands. In close. Hatcher making Danico pay a price, but look out, here comes Bailey. Bailey's up now and seems to be all right, and he goes right in after Hatcher. And now it's going to be Hatcher and Bailey, and the linesman Swede knocks, or Wayne Bonney makes a smart move to get out of the way of that. Scott Stevens is involved. Mike Gartner trying to hold off Pat Verbeek, who's as well trying to get into the fray. First it was Danico with Hatcher, and then Maley came on and tries to grab Hatcher, and then Stevens jumped in, and he tries to even it up, and now Gartner has a grip on Verbeek, who's getting a little too close for the Capitals' comfort. Jim Schoenfeld moves down to his end of the bench for a better look at all this, next to assistant coach Bob Hoffmeyer. Remember when this was a friendly rivalry? Oh, yeah, Scott, Scott Stevens, Stevens right going in front to the, the New Devil's Jersey bench. bench. Who's he talking to? Sean Feld? Looks like Sean Feld's the man that he's taunting right now. When Doug Carpenter coached this team, he and Brian Murray had a rivalry that went back to junior hockey. And now Stevens is pretty well smothered in there by Maley. Oh, now look at Maley like he's actually showing Hatcher some concern. Threw him down to the ice. Hatcher hits his head, and now David Maley pretends like he cares. Stevens has been put in the penalty box. So has Danico. And I'm sure many more are going to follow him. Now Maley signaling over at Scott Stevens. And Scott Stevens opens the penalty box door and says, come on. Come on over to me. Stevens did not leave the penalty box. Therefore, no further penalties, such as a game misconduct for a fight that would take place off the ice could be given. But it was a pretty lame attempt by the off-ice officials there to try and grab Stevens by the sweater and hold him in. They should have kept that door shut. But how do you stop Scott Stevens if he wants to open the door? I want to see if we've got a replay on how Maley hit the bench, hit the boards, rather, right in front of the Capitals' bench. Obviously, he felt it was Kevin Hatcher or Stevens who upended him illegally and sent him flying. We'll try and sort all of this out for you as it gets crazier in the Meadowlands. We'll step out with the Devils leading the cap. It's obvious Scott Stevens and Kevin Hatcher will be spending quite a bit of time in the Capitals penalty box. And with Greg Smith already tossed out of the game, Washington Capitals now down to three defensemen. Of course, this game is pretty much out of reach, if not completely, with the Devils up by four. Now Dennis Morrell still discussing things with his linesman and now seems ready to make the calls. And here's how it, I guess, all begins. Kevin Hatcher with a shot and an elbow up to the top of the head of Maley, knocking him off balance, and that's when he goes flying into the boards in front of the Capitals bench. And that's what had Danico coming after Kevin Hatcher. Not exactly a clean play by Hatcher, but not as bad as a lot that we've seen tonight. And there is Danico. There comes Maley coming in. And I, you know, how this guy isn't the third man in the fight, I don't know. I mean, David Maley, to me, has got to be out of this hockey game. Came back in. Danico had already been engaged with Hatcher. How they can allow David Maley to come in in that situation and keep him in the game is beyond me. Very clear cut observation there. There's no question he belongs out of this game for interfering in that fight and becoming involved in it. Of course, he felt his involvement began with Hatcher's elbow, but nonetheless, the fight had already started and he had no business getting involved in it. I can understand why he wants to be involved in it. I can't understand why if Dennis Morrell doesn't punish him for it. Strangely enough, one man missing from this contest tonight for New Jersey is Perry Anderson, who leads both teams involved in this series in penalty minutes with 67. And he's out because he has received two misconduct penalties, game misconducts, in the playoffs. So he's serving a one-game suspension, and that is tonight. He'll be available on Sunday. 
And Sunday's game should be a great one, Mike. It's game four of the finals, and we'll have it for you right here on DC 20. The Caps return here to the Meadowlands with these Devils, and everything gets underway with Jeff Rimmer's pregame show at 7.30 p.m. Join us for Patrick Division action right here on DC 20, your superstation for sports. Now, it looks like they've kicked Scott Stevens out of the game. Now, what is the situation? Here comes David Maley as the third man in a fight. Scott Stevens gets kicked out for being the fourth man in? No, I would think Scott Stevens probably is being kicked out for opening, opening up that the door and trying to taunt the player on, although technically you have to be involved in a fight, but he was trying to continue it. There's no question about that. Technically, the rule is that if you get involved in a fight off the ice, whether it be in the runway or on the bench or in the penalty box, or if you should leave the penalty box, then you're out. Now, he didn't leave the penalty box, and he didn't get in a fight, but let's wait till we've heard the calls here, and we'll see exactly what he's been given. He might have a 10-minute misconduct and a, a five-minute fighting major and something else, and that might take more than the 15-20 that's left. So I don't know for sure that he's got a game misconduct, but it is possible. And I think that's exactly the reason why Maley has left the ice surface. For being the third man in, he should be kicked out of the game. Well, once again, you got to, if that's the situation, you have to admire Jim Schoenfeld if he's ordered this and the trade-offs that he gets. Brendan Shanahan for Greg Smith, a veteran defenseman for the Capitals when they could have used him. Those guys are out, and it looks like Maley in exchange for Scott Stevens. That definitely favors the New Jersey Devils. There's another break in the action. They're still sorting out the penalties. We'll be back after these words. Well, it looks like they've announced the penalties. And right now, what I see on the board, a two-minute minor tacked up there for the New Jersey Devils to Danico, but a five-minute major to Kevin Hatcher. So it looks like it will be a three-minute power play for the New Jersey Devils. I can't understand this. We should be getting the announcements here momentarily. Meanwhile, we've got something going on behind us in the stands that we can't see that appears to have everyone else's attention in this building. You know, they always said that someday this would be just like Madison Square Garden. <laughs> A little nicer looking, but uh, you get the same intensity from the crowd. These Devil fans are new, but they're learning. Here come the calls. For Washington, number three, Scott Stevens, receives two minutes roughing, five minutes fighting, and a ten-minute misconduct. And number four, Kevin Hatcher, receives a double minor, ten minutes for fighting. A double major, ten minutes for fighting. The Devils penalties, number three, Ken Danico, two minutes roughing and five for fighting. And number eight, Dave Manley, two minutes roughing, five minutes fighting, and a game misconduct. The time of the penalties come at 4.40. So we have two, five, and ten to Maley, roughing, fighting, and a game misconduct. Stevens gets two, five, and ten, roughing, fighting, and a ten-minute misconduct. So he didn't get a game misconduct, as we had, had thought. Danico gets two minutes for roughing and five minutes for fighting. That's why Danico has the two minutes up there now. And Hatcher gets a double major for fighting, as he was involved in two fights. So <laughs> two fights, two penalties to Kevin Hatcher, five and five. All this coming at 440. And that's why Hatcher has five minutes up on the clock, and Danico has two up on the clock for his part in the roughing. So, so what, they, what Dennis Morrell is asking us to believe, and this really is fantasy land here, he's asking us to believe that Kevin Hatcher was involved in two fights, but one of the fights he was involved in, the other guy didn't throw any punches. He just was in there for roughing, right? That it wasn't a, a, an even fight. I would think that Despite either... Despite the fact that Ken Danico went right after Kevin Hatcher, in defense of his teammate, I give you that, but went right after him and in instigated the fight. No question in my mind, Ken Danico went out there after Kevin Hatcher and instigated the fight to stand up for his teammate. 
Then David Maley comes in there and also gets something going, and they get something going with Scott Stevens. Now, where is Dennis Farrell and the linesman all this? I mean, it's not because we've got the beauty of the 2020 hindsight on instant replay, but there's no question Ken Danico, for the reasons that we talked about in defense of his teammate, went after and instigated a fight with Kevin Hatcher and does not get an instigator, and they say the roughing call is not is just roughing that he's not dropping the gloves and engaged in a full-fledged fight. Now, they could have given Kevin Hatcher extra time for a high-sticking or an elbowing play that got Maley upended in the first place. I wouldn't argue that, but that's just awful, just awful calls from Dennis Morell in that regard. It just shows me that they're not watching what's going on. So to fix this, you feel then that if Danico got also a double major and give Hatcher an extra two minutes for either an elbow or a high stick that got Bailey upended in the first place. Would okay. almost get the same result. This way, there'd be but an extra three minutes. But they're, yeah, but they're minor penalties. It's a little different. So here come the... Uh, Franceschetti's gonna serve the, the penalty. The minor, number 16, Pat Verbeek. And Verbeek will serve one for New Jersey on Danico's behalf. Now, Danico, or rather, Maley, and Stevens have both left the ice surface and are not in the penalty boxes. They're back in their dressing rooms. Here we go. We're underway again. Bella Sheck to the corner, and he's bumped hard by Ledyard, who's in turn hit by Loisel. Now Pavanka up to center ice. Gets across the line. Lobs it into the corner. Off the glass, it goes behind the net. Mike Ridley in to tie up with Doug Brown. The puck goes behind the goal. And Sorella's back to take it. Belichick out to center ice. Ledger tosses back to the New Jersey line. And Sorella back after. The Capitals have changed up. It'll be fascinating to see exactly how they play things defensively now. As Al Koken pointed out, Greg Smith already removed from this contest. And now Scott Stevens gone for the balance of regulation time. Here's Gartner. Wrist shot. Caught by Burke. He seems surprised, but he got the glove over there in time to make the save. Well, Mike, right now, at least at four on four, Ben Gustafson is playing defense. He was out there as a defenseman with Larry Murphy as Miller and Gartner were the two forwards. Larry Murphy does not like a call from the linesman, Swede Knox, and goes over to tell him about it on his way to the bench. Well, how is it that this face-off is outside the zone. Now, am I seeing the, the same thing you are? Looks like glove is, it in his end. That's right. Sean Burke has got the puck in his glove. If he stops play, face-off has got to be immediately to his left, not outside the zone. Gustafson, the lone man back right now. He's out there with Gary Gallen. And the Devils start out. Stolen puck. Gartner's got it. Turns around and can't get the shot off. And now it's played by New Jersey's Aaron Broughton to center ice. Left wing side. Conacher has it taken away by Galley. And now Kelly Miller up to Gartner. He's tripped up. There's going to be a penalty call against New Jersey. And Washington will very shortly be in much better shape because of this call. Because in 35 seconds, Danico, or at least Verbeek, who's serving Danico's penalty, will come out of the box. And the Caps would have been shorthanded. Now they'll be even up. Well, it's going to be a situation right now for the next 35 seconds. Four on three hockey for the Washington Capitals. Mike Gardner upended as he crosses that blue line. Two minutes for tripping. At the two minutes tripping penalty for number five of the Devils, Tom Turbers. It comes at 6.06. So Dale Hunter out there for the faceoff. He'll have Michael Pavanka up front with him. Murphy and Galley will be the point man in just three New Jersey Devils for the next 35 seconds. Then it will be back to four on four hockey. Here's Murphy. Over to Galley. Bounce to the side of the net, just missing Pavanka, and it's cleared off the boards by Patrick Sundstrom, who has six points in the game already. Two goals and four assists. Murphy works his way to center ice. Passes to Galley. He's across the line. 
Now over to Murphy. Deeks his way in behind the net. Murphy skates around, puts it in front, and it's stolen and cleared by Velashek. Four on three like that, you got to use your point men. There were enough players down to take away the advantage the Capitals had in front, but the point men wide open. Larry Murphy didn't go back to it. Here comes Galley. In across the line. Server starts serving. Final minute, 10 seconds of his call, and here's Christian to turn it around into the corner. Now over to Pavanka. Four Capitals out there and four Devils. Gustafson to the corner. Checked by Patrick Sundstrom. Gustafson hit on the play by Pat Verbeek. The puck led ahead to Velashek on the left wing. He's to the center ice line and tosses it in. Malarchuk holds it behind the net and over now to Grant Ledyard. Ledyard starts ahead to Bobby Gould. Gould to Christian, and as he gets across the line, Gould was in first. Offside is called. Thirty-five seconds left in the Curvers' call. Two ten left in the five-minute major that stood out for Kevin Hatcher. to work the faceoff here against Claude Loisel. The draw brought back to Ledyard. Gould over to Christian, feeds to the blue line. It's picked up by Loisel on the comeback. Here come the Devils. Loisel faking, trying to fire. And it's sent into the corner. Brown back of the goal. Malarchuk moves it on to the corner. Poked behind the net. Doug Brown waiting on it there. Throws it right out front. Malarchuk slaps it free. Bob Gould chasing to the sideboards. Gould back over to Ledyard. Throws it behind the net to Larry Murphy. Curvers is out of the box. The Devils get the power play back now for a minute and a half. And Ledyard just drives it all the way down the ice. New Jersey leads 8-4 with 11.35 to play in the third period. Mark Johnson with the hat trick in this game. Over to Driver. Driver off the board. So Peter Sundstrom steals for the Capitals. Out now to Ridley. Ridley backs it up to Bank Gustafson. Again to Mike Ridley. And Ridley flips it out to center ice. Johnson flags it down. Carries into the Washington zone. Gustafson steals and pokes it out to center. Pat Verbeek across the line. Wrist shot. They score. New Jersey makes it 9 to 4. It's a power play goal. Hatcher does not come out of the box. He has to stay in there and serve the final 37 seconds. And who else but that man? The man who has been the major goal scorer tonight, Mark Johnson, set up all alone, two on one situation, quickly developed because New Jersey's hustling. New Jersey keeps pushing the attack. New Jersey won't. Stand around and let the Capitals come back to them. Nice quick pass. In comes Sundstrom again, and he's been as magnificent, if not more so, than Johnson. And Malarchuk really has little chance on that. The quick pass. Mark Johnson set up perfectly and bangs it home to make it 9-4. to four. Watch how quickly this play develops. Right there at the blue line, both of them parallel to it. Gustafson, the lone man back. He doesn't get anything done there. And Malarchuk is beaten cleanly. Number four on the night for Mark Johnson. Number 12, Mark Johnson. The first of the line, number 16, Patrick Sundstrom. And number 15, John McLean. The time of the goal is 9.03. That's Johnson, his eighth, fourth of the night from Sundstrom and McLean. At 9.03, it's a power play goal. So Sundstrom gets his seventh point in this game. Ladies and gentlemen. And Johnson with four goals. Patrick Sundstrom has just tied the record for most points in a playoff game. Here's Conacher. Currently in the chair now with Wayne Gretzky. In the corner now takes it behind the net. Now we've just been informed that the point by Patrick Sundstrom ties him for the most points ever 
in a National Hockey League playoff game. And he's tied with Wayne Gretzky. Here's a shot on net, and it's caught by Burke, and he hangs on. Well, that's pretty exclusive company there. Nice group to stay with. You're talking about a lot of Stanley Cup playoff games. Well, the New Jersey Devils now are going to be penalized. We'll tell you who it is when we return. The Devils pour it on the Caps, 9-4. to four. Deep shots continue. This time it's New Jersey's turn. Aaron Broughton, one of the least likely guys you'd expect. A slashing is the call, 9-47. It's been an ugly series, Mike. I really don't like what's going on out there, and it's going to be interesting to see now. Will it finally get out of its system? The Capitals have to try and send some sort of a message to the New Jersey Devils, but do you do it just by dropping the gloves and going, or do you do it by a little tighter, more aggressive overall game, both in their penalty killing, their even strength situation, their ability to stop the New Jersey board check. And you don't want to start this, and now Dale Hunter, you know, answering back, is going to get himself an unsportsmanlike conduct ball. Well, Hunter going to the box now gives this game a total of 143 minutes in penalties so far and I think it'd be one thing Al if this were the let's say game two and game three which is tonight being the sixth and seventh games of a series but here we are just three games into the series and all this has happened so far and you talk about talk about it getting ugly I, I really don't know what's going to be the turning point if it isn't this type of stuff that's going on I don't know what either team is going to do especially the Capitals to try and change their fortunes. Obviously, a lot of goals that help. And a game misconduct. Now, Hunter is given a two-minute on sportsmanlike conduct and a game misconduct. Well, the one thing you can say, at least some of the key players for the Washington Capitals better be pretty well rested. <laughs> A lot of them won't be seeing much ice time the rest of the way. For the wrong reason. Yeah. They'll be rested. Already got the game misconduct call. Time of that call, 9.57. Brian Murray demanding some sort of answer from Dennis Morrell. He's got his players over by the bench. And he's waiting for Morrell to come on over. All Hunter needed was 10 to get out of the game. He had already been given a two. They went right to a game misconduct, and that's what's got Murray miffed. Serving the penalty for Washington. Greg Adams. Adams. Greg Adams will serve the penalty on Hunter's behalf. I'm sure Dale Hunter learned enough French up in Quebec to have offended <laughs> Dennis Morrell. It's take Dale Hunter very long to make uh, some new enemies wherever he goes. Well, he's got nothing but solid backing in Washington with the Capitals fans, but has certainly angered his newfound rivals here in the Patrick Division. They hated him in the Adams Division for years. But I think David Poyle and Brian Murray knew exactly what type of quality player they were getting in Hunter when they acquired him. And he's been so much a part of the Capitals' success this season. Here, Malarchuk makes a save, and Conacher standing by in case a rebound should come loose. It didn't. The Devils wound up with a terrific record this season against Patrick Division clubs. You know, they won 19 games, only lost 14 and tied two. The Capitals ended up 17, 15, and three. And for much of the stretch there, until the last couple of weeks, the Caps led all Patrick Division teams in record against the Patrick Division. The Devils wind up with a superior record in divisional play. Tie up on the backboards, and here's Verbeek to try and dig it out. Murphy's right on him. And Conacher has it stolen. Lead pass to Galley. Takes his time in his own blue line. Now throws it over to Larry Murphy. Chris Chelios has put the Montreal Canadiens on the board. It's now 3-1 to one Boston. Belichick at the blue line. Taken away by Murphy. Conacher jams up Murphy in there. Gets punched by Verbeek from behind. 
and the puck cleared out of the zone to Pavanka. We have a delayed penalty call coming against the Devils. Pavanka across the blue line and is taken down and as it's touched in the corner there'll be a penalty call here coming against New Jersey and Verbeek gets two for roughing. There's a break in the action with a score. The Devils nine, the Capitals four. So, what do you guys feel like doing, huh? I'm hungry. You're always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel like? Burgers. I could go for some chicken. Okay, let's do it. So, where are we going? <laughs> Roy Rogers, where else? Hey, why don't we try some place different, huh? Now the Capitals will be back in on a four-on-three situation. 45 seconds remain in the slashing call to Broughton. Verbeek has now joined him. Roughing is the call at 11:02. Of course, Hunter's got the sportsmanlike conduct and the rest of the uh, major a little bit working from Kevin Hatcher. Slap shot by Ledyard deflected wide into the corner goes Gustafson after it. It's played outside the zone. Well, to the blue line, Ledyard hustles and keeps it in. Tosses the puck over to Gustafson. Gustafson goes back to Ledyard. Now to Mike Ridley. Ridley on the power play attack. Rink wide for Gustafson. Back to the point. Ledyard again to Ridley. Ridley turns it around and fires. That's knocked down. Gartner chases the puck into the corner for Ridley. Gartner tries to center for Gustafson. A wrist shot by Ridley and a save by Burke. And he smothers at the stop play. Even with the Capitals four on three, the New Jersey Devils seem to be able to keep them on the perimeter. Patrick Sundstrom, who has been all over the ice tonight in every situation for Jim Schoenfeld, doing the work there was Ridley Gartner playing perimeter hockey. Nothing getting to the middle until that final shot, and Sean Burke takes care of that easily. Ready to work the faceoff, wins it back to Larry Murphy. Over to Gary Galley. Slap shot caught. Burke saw that one headed up high and just reached up with a glove and snared it. Capitals get this face off. Murphy stops, sends it over to Gary Galley. He at least unloads to try and get something, but you see how it deflects off the stick of the New Jersey player right in front of Galley. Takes a little steam off the shot, puts it up high where Sean Burke once again has no trouble handling it. The draw comes to Pavanka. His shot goes wide. Burke plays it up the boards now for Brown. Doug Brown back in the corner. Joe Sorella over to Randy Velashek. Leads it back to Sorella. He breaks across the center line inside the Washington zone. Passes to the corner. Pavanka back to play it. Puts it behind the net. Now Murphy into the corner. And Velashek takes a run at Larry Murphy. Only glances off him. Here comes Pavanka turning it around. Starts to center ice. Hook check at the blue line. Galley carries it on in. Stops. Passes to Pavanka. A shot blocked. And the Devils on the comeback. Here comes Doug Brown to the Washington line on Murphy. Walks in. He fakes. He fires. A save made by Malarchuk. And Galley has the rebound. Here comes Gary Galley to center. Right wing side for Sundstrom. Taps it into the corner. Bob Gould against the boards. And John McLean finally comes up with a puck. Seven minutes to go. Third period. Penalties over for Beaks out of the box. Only 50 seconds remaining now in the call to Dale Hunter. Here's Conacher firing a save. Malarchuk the rebound. Knocked wide as Verbeek is sent to the ice by a cross check from Gould. The puck cleared all the way down and Kerbers is back to get it. Gustafson. 
Back to his own line. And the Devils are offside as McLean sends it in. Well, your room in front of Jim Schoenfeld with people still in the penalty box. People ejected. Well, that way on both benches. Schoenfeld has had almost everything go his way. And with Randy Velichek running Larry Murphy, the intensity continues. The message is continuing to be delivered from the New Jersey Devils to the Washington Capitals. And better hope that they've received it and understand what they've got to do now. Capitals show tremendous character coming back against the Philadelphia Flyers when few gave them any chance. So they're losing this game, they're just down 2-1. A victory tomorrow night gives them home ice advantage, but they've got to get wakened up. Here's a shot and a save made by Malarchuk. The puck cleared over to McLean. He pounds it off the boards, but it goes all the way to center ice for Willanen. Back to McLean. McLean across the blue line. Looks for Johnson. It's sent back into the corner, and Malarchuk leaves it behind the net now for Gustafson. Tie up on the backboards. McLean holds it in. Now tries to work it away from Ledyard, and Gustafson takes it off the glass out to center ice. Patrick Sundstrom charges to the net. He's done nothing wrong, and here's another example. A backhand shot that beats Malarchuk, and that could do it. Patrick Sundstrom now becomes the holder of a record in Stanley Cup history, he has more points than any other player has ever scored in one game. Three goals in this contest for Patrick Sundstrom. And five assists. Right between the pads of Malarcha. Patrick Sundstrom continues to be on the move. Ledyard can't slow him up and watch Sundstrom. You think you've got him forced to the wing, throws that little backhander. Malarchuk not even ready for it and pops it right between the pads of Malarchuk. Sundstrom has been magnificent, as has Mark Johnson. And the Devils continue to rub the Capitals' face in it. 10 to 4. Now you talked about a message earlier, and I think that's very definitely what the message is right now. Just that, that they are rubbing their faces into it. And that's what the Capitals are going to have to respond to on Sunday night. Jeff Greenlaw got involved in something. It looks like Gary Galley in the middle of it with the New Jersey Devil yet to be identified. Now Larry Murphy exchanging shoves with Craig Wolanin through a pile. Greenlaw has got himself hooked up with another New Jersey Devil. This looks like it's Danico. Sundstrom gets his sixth of the playoffs and his third of the night. Danico gets the assist at 14-14. I couldn't hear if they'd given another assist or not on the Sundstrom goal, but the Devils are racking up plenty of points tonight, believe me. So two hat tricks in this game already. Mark Johnson, who has four goals in the contest, and now Sundstrom also gets a hat trick as the Devils lead the Capitals 10 to four in game three of this Patrick Division final round. Really, there aren't many players left that no. you think about when you start to think about the scuffling and the fighting. Scott Stevens has been removed from the game from the Capitals. So is Dale Hunter. Now Greenlaw and Danico. Maley's out of the game for New Jersey. Greenlaw keeps saying, if you want to fight, I will. This is all right in front of Dennis Morrell. You can imagine these two are history. Larry Murphy now being escorted to the Capitals dressing room. Galley had been sent into the box, so it's like as far as I can determine, that means Grant Ledyard is the lone remaining Capitals defenseman. We've always talked about Dave Christian possibly filling that role someday if need be, and this might be the opportunity to put him back on the blue line with only 5.39 to play. We saw Gustafson there earlier. 
Greenlaw is sent off the ice. So is Murphy. There's a break in the action with a score. The Devils 10 and the Capitals 4. Morrell still 539 left in this travesty. Murphy, as we told you, off the ice. Danico also has been escorted off the ice for the New Jersey Devils. Galley in the box. A New Jersey player I couldn't identify is also sitting in there. Greenlaw, I think, has also been sent to the showers. Dennis Morrell doing what he should do. If the players want to turn this thing into a, more of a nonsensical affair than it's already been, we'll be happy to oblige. If you want to play literal three-on-three -three hockey, meaning you've got three skaters left, you keep them out there the rest of these five minutes, he'd be happy to oblige them as well. really has been a joke tonight, and it certainly is not the situation where you could point to one side or the other and say, well, it was very clear on what the intention was, and point to a couple players and say, well, you know, it's, there's no question, this guy in the lineup's trying to do this. It's come from both sides, and it's been ugly, it's been ridiculous, and it's, to a small degree, maybe, taken away from a brilliant performance by the New Jersey Devils team in, in general, and in particular, Patrick Sundstrom and Mark Johnson. Close-up look at the man who has been the story of the game along with Mark Johnson. Turns around and see how quickly he's back in action, that quick transition game. He could care less if his team is up on top by five. He's going for more. And he keeps pouring it on the New Jersey Devils. Pour it on the Washington Capitals. Number eight, Larry Murphy. Number 24, Jeff Greenlaw. Each receives 10 minutes misconduct penalty. For the Devils, number 19, Claude Loisel. Receives the double minor, four minutes for roughing. And number three, Ken Danico. Number 32, Pat Conacher, each a 10-minute misconduct. The time of all penalties, 14-21. So we saw five 10-minute misconduct penalties come out. Well, we've got... at four here. What did... Uh, it's just misconduct calls. What did Galley get? He got a, a two-minute roughing call. All right, so that's why we've got a power play right. up on the board now for Washington as Loisel gets four minutes for his roughing call. So four misconduct penalties, the ten-minute variety, and then a minor for roughing to Galley and four minutes going to Claude Loisel. Washington power play once again, but back come the Devils on the attack. Here's a slap shot, and Malarchuk with a save. It goes behind the goal over to Sundstrom in the corner. How's this for a defense pairing? Bank Gustafson and David Christian are working the points, playing defense right now for the Capitals. Here's Greg Adams to the corner. Back to the point again for Christian. Christian throws it over to Gustafson. Gustafson back to Christian at the point on the power play. And now again to Gustafson. It comes out of the zone play hockey for the Capitals. They trail 10 to 4. Here's Christian into the corner and the puck is stolen by Sorella and he clears it all the way down. Malarchuk bumped by Mark Johnson. Now we've got a penalty call coming up, a delayed call. Or was it the other yes. way around? They're saying that Malarchuk bumped Johnson. Prevented Johnson from going behind the net after Gustafson and interfered with him. So Malarchuk the goaltenders finally get in the penalty parade. Here comes Mark Johnson, and there's Clint Malarchuk riding him off to prevent him to get at Gustafson. Dennis Morrell stays consistent, keeps the calls coming. Yeah, I would hope that nobody would get the uh, impression with what we've talked about with all the penalty minutes that we were in any way saying that Dennis Morrell was not calling the game. Oh, I know. I mean, it's uh, he's called what has happened out there. About the only, well, what can you do? You can't give him misconduct penalties. You can't give him fighting majors until something happens. Oh, yeah. This time it's Malarchuk. Goaltender Clint Malarchuk. He received. Well, that is to Morell's credit. I really thought he's done a, a strong job, and you know he started out calling things early. He wasn't going to let it get out of hand in terms of not making the calls and thinking players can take liberties. The players knew they were going to get penalized, but didn't seem to care. They kept going at it. And for the most part, just doesn't seem to matter to most of the skaters out there. 
A skeleton crew left on hand here for both sides as Miller takes it across the blue line. He's into the corner and gets away from Curvers. Passes off to Mike Ridley right in front. Here's Ledyard cruising in. Can't get the shot underway. Now Driver takes a spill in the corner. Miller tries to dig it free. It goes behind the net. Over to the sideboards and Mike Ridley right side to the point. Kevin Hatcher a shot right on goal. The save made by Burke. The rebound grabbed by Ridley. Takes it behind the net. And as he tries to poke it out front, Aaron Broughton picks it up and starts back for New Jersey. Lead pass to the Washington Blue Line, cut short by Bobby Gould. Gould puts it back into the devil zone. Penalty about to expire to Claude Wazell. And as he jumps out of the box, Malarchuk's penalty still to be served. So now a one-minute power play for New Jersey. Here comes Doug Brown to the corner. Now McLean jammed up. Tied up by Hatcher. Lou Francis Getty starts out. Works to center ice. Gets across the blue line. He's spun around on the play. And now another penalty call coming. And this time it appears to be Velashek who is going off the ice for hooking. 16.45 the time of this call here in the third period. It's holding to Randy Velashek of the Devils. Francis Getty makes a pretty good move. Belichick reaches out, grabs him, helps him to the ice. And even though this game is so far out of reach, Dennis Morell is going to stay with the pattern. Calling the penalty. Not letting what's going on in the game dictate what he calls. Randy Belichick, and it comes at 16.45. Gartner to work the faceoff here against Aaron Broughton. 41 seconds left on the penalty to Malarchuk. Four on four hockey. Broughton drives it in. Off the glass. It's put behind the net. Ledyard circles the goal. Tries to start out. Moves it ahead now to Hatcher. Takes it to the center line. Right wing pass. Gartner across the blue line. Mike Gartner with a goal tonight. Dumped to the ice by Wolanin. Now here's Hatcher. Has it swept free by Patrick Sundstrom, who has set a Stanley Cup playoff record in this game tonight for most points ever in a single game. Gartner starts to center. Left wing side to Pavanka. Gets across the line. Peter Sundstrom had served the Malarchuk penalty. He's out of the box. The Capitals with the power play now. Belichick is still in there. Gartner behind the net. Over to Christian. He fires right on goal and a rebound shot wide by Peter Sundstrom. And the puck cleared all the way down by the Devils. Off the sideboards, here comes Ledyard. Out to center ice to Dave Christian. Christian across the line to Gould into the corner. Power play hockey for another 40 seconds in Washington's favor and 154 remaining in the third period. And play is called as the puck is shot into the crowd. I don't know, Al, before game two, Terry Murray told Jeff Rimmer that he did not expect a physical game. He didn't think there'd be a lot of rough stuff. And tonight, he told Jeff Rimmer that he didn't think it would be any more so than we saw in game two. Well, now it has been not the case. In worse. both instances, it's been worse. The coaches apparently do not think this is going to happen. At least from Washington's side, we've only talked to Terry Murray. Well, you know, again, you, you got to say that the players have the final determination. You can show sure. your team right before the start of the period. Don't take any unnecessary penalties, and you see what happens in the opening minutes. You get a, an, inter, uh, an interference, a slashing call from Jeff Greenlaw. Get an interference call of Ben Gustafson. Those are away from the play, things that really aren't necessary in that regard, and Mark Johnson cashes in. That just opens the floodgates. Then you start to scramble, then you start to get frustrated, then everybody takes penalties, then New Jersey tries to send a message and tries to you know, press upon you. You're in our building now, and this is the way things are gonna be played. The Capitals, as they showed the Flyers, a proud team will not take any guff. New Jersey also showing the New York Islanders, we're here to play, we're here to be physical, and 
plastering just continues. But you expect that, I think, in the early parts of the series. I was surprised to hear Terry Murray say that he didn't think it was going to be chipping. Here goes Gary Galley into the corner. I fully realize Terry Murray's not playing in this game. It's the players on the ice who are responsible for what goes on, but it leads us to wonder now what Sunday's going to be like. Here's Brown. This is the last thing the Walks play into Verbeek at the side of the net. Rotten, who had the hat trick the other night, centers it. Brown. And now Malarchuk is run into the back of the, or into the goal post and turns around in wild response. Dave Christian standing by as see who that capital is it's being pulled away looks like Gary yeah, Galley yeah. and the player is Pat Verbeek Watch of the, the shot he gives Verbeek Verbeek standing and he's the guy who sends Verbeek into Malarchuk Malarchuk reacting to being run by Verbeek but it's because Gary Galley nailed him from behind it was Galley who initiated the contact on Verbeek and sent him into Malarchuk so now Galley and Verbeek have both been excused from the game with only 52 seconds left Just when you think you've finally seen the last of the penalties. <laughs> you know a couple more. We still got 52 seconds left, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this game end in something else. Well, that and 14 goals with all these assists. You know how I always used to like, I like to figure my own statistics. I think I'll let the computers <laughs> do it for Sunday's game. Up the boards comes McLean. Now Pavanka takes it in his own zone, backs it up for Ledger. Out to center ice. Hatcher has the puck. Kevin Hatcher on now with Grant Ledger. 35 seconds left. Pavanka to Hatcher. Up the sideboard for Sundstrom. Played out to center ice and Belichak. Hatcher picks it up at the red line. 20 seconds to go. His wrist shot deflected up into the seat. And the fans that are remaining here at the Meadowlands standing and giving the Devils quite an ovation and one that they certainly deserve as they've ripped up the Washington Capitals in game three to take a two games to one lead in the series. We have not been given an official attendance figure for this game tonight, but we understand it is sold out. I'm not sure what their playoff capacity is. We'll try to get that for you, but many of them have departed. But it's certainly been a loud and boisterous building here tonight, and something that on many occasions we've had to comment over the years that has not been the case. There's not been any atmosphere here. But they've packed the Meadowlands Arena here tonight. Here's Kevin Hatcher at center. Over to Adams, he fires it in. The save is made by Burke up to Johnson, and the Devils have taken game three. Final score, New Jersey Devils 10, and the Washington Capitals four. The shots on goal in the third period, and there were not many of them. New Jersey they had nine a game total of 31 and Washington had 10 a game total of 31.